I'm Harish Schwab. I'm a, I'm a consultant clinical scientist, head of scientific computing at GSTT. My, my other role um, is I'm the AI transformation lead for the London AI Centre, which is a centre of excellence and a consortium made up of uh, hospital trusts, academics or uh, academic institutions and industry partners funded by the Office of Life Sciences and, and Innovate UK. And I'm going to be talking today about aid. And the tagline says a new operating system for the hospital. Um, and um, given, given the nature of the audience, I would just ask you to substitute, substitute the word AI with post-processing, right? Um, that's what I actually mean. Um, but let's let's get started. So <clears throat> the, the fundamental challenge that that aid was trying to solve, and and typically that me and my GSTT role and my team are trying to solve is crossing this gulf of innovation, right? In in our ecosystem in in London, particularly Southeast London, outside the walls of the hospital, the left hand side, we have an incredible amount of investment in in AI technology, data driven technologies. And that's in the form of um, skills. You know, we have fantastic and talented data scientists in our academic institutions. Um, we have uh, incredible pace of development of technology, whether that's um, new types of algorithms and models or um, uh, infrastructure like Cambridge One, which is the, the largest supercomputer dedicated to healthcare, and, um, and then the associated financial investment um, as well. However, when I go across the road, I'm, I'm sitting in the hospital, and this would be a, a familiar story for those of us who are in the NHS, is you'd see very little of it uh, coming over, right? It's it's barely a trickle. And, and in our experience, the challenge of adopting cutting edge technology is often boiled down to the lack of one of three components. So either we don't have the right people or we haven't given the right skills to the people that need to adopt these technologies. We don't have the right policies in place to uh, safely and effectively use uh, those cutting edge technologies or um, it can also be about the lack of platforms, right? There isn't a way to integrate that technology, be it AI, VR, whatever it might be. Uh, there's no way of integrating it into our existing clinical information systems, into our existing workflow and operations. And ultimately what that means is there isn't any delivery of value to the front line. What, what AID is focusing on is, is the platform question when it comes to adopting AI. And there, there are a couple of... Uh, important challenges when it comes to developing a platform for, for adopting AI technologies in the NHS. Some of them are common uh, to other sort of clinical informatics problems and some of them are unique. One of the unique ones is the fact that AI applications are incredibly narrow in, in terms of the domain they operate over. Um, for example, if you have an algorithm which detects ble bleeds in head CTs, that's all it does. And it won't detect a bleed in an MRI. It won't detect a bleed in, in anything else. It won't detect a tumor. It does a very specific task. And, uh, and it obviously comes with uh, a certain amount of risk and a certain amount of technical debt. And the challenge is, is that you, in order to achieve large scale transformation, you need an increasing number of AI models deployed at your institution. And this becomes an increasingly complex task to manage with an exponentially increasing amount of technical debt you are taking on in your institution. The, the next challenge is around interoperability, and that's one of the common ones across most clinical informatics systems. Um, uh, in particular, with, with AI, there are different levels of interoperability that are important. There's obviously the basic system interoperability, but there's also data and semantic interoperability. So when I say the word head CT, does that mean the same thing at every institution or in some institutions, will that include images that uh, where contrast agent has been administered or is that called something else? And then the, the final piece is about evidence generation. And this is a recognition of the fact that the medical AI is an incredibly immature um, ecosystem. Um, there are very few uh, proven technologies that you can adopt and have an understanding of the benefit that might be 
capture to uh, patient outcomes or hospital operations. And so there's an important requirement that any platform for medical AI allows you to generate and capture evidence of benefit. And what's really important is that this is done from an enterprise perspective, that we break away from the traditional silos of, you know, radiology doing their own AI activity, the cancer center doing their own AI activity, surgery doing their own thing, um, HR doing their own thing, um, you know, the bookings team uh, or, or whatever it might be, uh, procuring their own solution. Um, it's important to do that for a lot of the reasons why enterprise approaches in general are beneficial. It lowers the cost around recruiting and retaining staff. Um, clinical data scientists are in incredible short supply. I'm sure this audience knows. And it doesn't help if you're competing with other departments in your own hospital uh, to recruit them. It, it also doesn't help their career development if they're stuck in a silo. Uh, for no real business or scientific reason. Also, from an effectiveness perspective, it allows you to get an enterprise-wide view of the risks and benefit of, of the models that you have deployed. Um, often when you deploy something, say, in radiology to detect fractures, it might be picked up by, or the benefit might be realised by the fracture liaison service or, or some other department in the hospital. Um, it also allows you to better manage the technical risks when it comes being able to see the upstream and, and downstream uh, data flows. Uh, and this is where the, the AI deployment engine comes in. Uh, and in order to explain where it sits sort of in the constellation of uh, informatic systems that you are aware of, things like PAX, EPR and things like that, um, I'd like to go back uh, in history. Um, in 1895, hopefully some of you have seen that photograph, um, which is purported to be Wilhelm Röntgen's wife's hand um, and one of the first uh, images of a uh, of human hand with an x-ray. And and really, there, there wasn't a very quick adoption of x-ray technology in healthcare. Um, a lot of the first use cases were non-medical. They were things like making sure your shoes fit properly. Until we had the DICOM standard come around uh, about 100 years later, and it led to the absolute explosion of medical imaging in every patient pathway, um, and has led to the benefits in, in cancer, in neurodegenerative diseases that, that we've seen over the last couple of decades. And a decade ago, we were in a similar position with AI technology, right? Where we had the first glimpses of products on the market that we thought could make an impact, but it hasn't set medicine on fire in the way that we expected it to. And that's because we hadn't um, figured out how to standardize the storage, transfer, communication of AI models and their results. And that's where Monai Deploy comes in. So Monai Deploy is an open source community um, which is powering aid um, uh, that defines those components. And uh, I like to use the smartphone analogy to explain the value uh, to both hospitals and developers. From a developer perspective, um, it's a bit like moving away from Nokia 3310 to, to the smartphone era in terms of having a, a single target, but many devices um that you could uh, develop towards right um so you go from and from the uh, institution perspective you go from having very limited choice to almost too much choice uh, in terms of the applications you can potentially deploy um on your platform so what is it in in reality what is aid so aid is um itself a clinical information system it's uh an app store and an ai execution and orchestration platform um the app store allows developers uh, both commercial and academic to distribute their applications to any institution that has an aid installation from the institution perspective it allows you to manage all of the AI models deployed in your institution in a single view and ultimately helps manage your technical, clinical and regulatory risks around AI deployment. So it really is a, a 360 approach. Uh, this is a, a, a quick demo 
of uh, what aid looks like um, in, in practice. Um, it's going to jump to a, a pseudo PAC screen, which is where sort of the journey starts. Um, so you'd have, say, a, a head CT study that you would send to aid, which is registered as a destination. The aid out, uh, platform would detect that this is a, a head CT and would realize that it has an application that can analyze this. Um, uh, the clinical review page allows you to then inspect the result, which is this PDF output uh, that the model has created that helps neurologists in this instance understand the consequences of a stroke. Um, um, it then allows you to accept or reject the quality of that AI result, adding sort of safety into the process and a human in the loop, although this, this step is actually kind of optional. You can have it processed autom automatically. And then from the admin perspective, you have this sort of enterprise view where you have um, sort of headline figures around executions, the status of various models, as well as every model that's deployed at your institution and every execution that has happened um, and the ability to, to do root cause analysis or, or diagnose any potential issues in your pipeline. So, um, yeah, like I mentioned, the clinical review page is really about managing the clinical risk associated with AI technology. It also allows you to provide earlier feedback to developers um, so you can run pilot studies or um, first in sort of man type studies uh, where the technology isn't quite ready to have its results impacting the patient pathway. And, and we, we managed to close that sort of um, hard to catch feedback loop in medicine, which we're always looking for. You know, whenever we introduce an intervention, it's always very difficult to see what is the quality and impact of that intervention. And the clinical review page is an attempt to solve that problem. Uh, I also mentioned um, the the app store. Um, so, so that's a, a couple of screen grabs uh, from the design of the app store. Um, and the real value of being able to distribute algorithms like that is it will scale up the NHS's ability to deliver digital clinical trials. Um, we can deploy models in shadow mode, in QA mode or research mode, and that has various different consequences and controls. You also have the ability to centralize reporting so that developers or researchers can see how those models are performing, obviously in a non-identifiable way. Um, across the different uh, estates and um, we make sure that the necessary documentation is available with the application. Um, so for CE marked products, that would be things like the declaration of conformity and the clinical safety case. For non-market approved products, it would be things like research protocols uh, uh, and the like. Um, so you can make a, uh, an appropriate and informed judgment around whether you want to deploy that algorithm. So in terms of um, the deployment of the platform itself, like I'm, uh, I think I mentioned at the beginning, this is part of the London AI Centre programme, and we're in the middle of rolling this out across London and the southeast of England. Uh, a prototype has been live at GSTT, where it was initially invented for over five years now. Um, um, but AID is live also at KCH, and we're almost live at, at UCLH, and then we're um, going to follow up with East Kent, Imperial, and, and everybody else that you see on screen. Um, the plan is eventually, obviously, to, to make this available uh, nationwide um, uh, as soon as we can. So we have a, we have a pipeline of, of over 20 AI applications, which we are distributing via the App Store. Um, like I mentioned, some of them are academic applications, some of them are CE marked market approved applications from all of the uh, names that you would probably recognize for those of you in the space. Um, but we're always looking for more developers to join the community. So that's either from the platform perspective, where you can join the Monai Deploy community, which is co-chaired by myself and a colleague from NVIDIA, or you can be at the application end and uh, develop applications that can target the aid platform. Um, so, so there's a QR code uh, for those of you who are interested. Thanks very much for your time. Happy to take some.